Hello buddy, my name is Eric and today we're going to get into that network tutorial that I've been uh, promising. And first of all, thank you for 10,000 subscribers, which I, I probably have more than 10,000 by the time I upload the video. I've been getting about a thousand a day and I thought I would post this at 10,000. So thank you so much. I'm glad everyone's enjoying the content. So the way I'm going to show you how to do this, because there are a few ways of doing it, uh, is going to be by installing a second virtual machine that we will use as a proxy. The reason I'm going to demonstrate this is because it's more cross-platform and it's just more straightforward. I'm going to be using VMware Workstation, which just as of today has become free for personal use. But if you have a different hypervisor you prefer, it's easy uh, enough to do this on any of them. The only thing that has to change... Okay, now I'll change this because this is a Kali Linux, not Ubuntu. I recommend using Kali Linux just because it's a bit easier. Ubuntu has a few default settings that are really annoying for doing this that I learned the hard way the first take of this video. So we're going to use Kali Linux. Now I'm going to give... It depends how much resources. I, I have like half a terabyte on this machine, so it literally doesn't matter. So we can just put as much as we want. Uh, I think 16 gigabytes is fine. It Really, 8 should work. Now uh, we just have to manually install Kali Linux. Now Kali Linux, of course, is kind of a bit of a meme and that it's sort of got a reputation. Well it, well, it is. It is for penetration testers, as they say, but it, it gets the job done. Okay, yeah, we can just call the host name Kali. Don't need a domain name. And I'm going to call this Kali again. Okay, we have to use password. I'll just make it very secure. I'll use password because it doesn't really matter. Uh, and we're on Pacific time, but it doesn't usually matter. Just got eight disks. Doesn't matter. This would really only matter. Oh, right changes. Yeah, if you were uh, planning on using this uh, as your main system, and we can use whatever desktop environment. I, if it was my main Linux system, I would use probably KDE, but we'll just use XFC. Okay, so then we install the grub, and we'll put that on Dev SDA. And then we're pretty much done. So now we have Kali Linux. So the next step is to do the network configuration. So we simply need to create a network where both our target machine and our Kali Linux are on the same. So the way I do this, uh, and given this is go we're going to use the wire guard method, we can have two simultaneously. So what we do is we add another network adapter. And we call this a LAN segment. We create it on this one. Okay, yeah, we select our LAN segment. And then uh, when we, we can shut down our Kali Linux and do the same thing. So now we add the second uh, network adapter to Kali Linux, and that one will connect to the same LAN segment. Uh, and now uh, we can boot up both of these machines. So we want to go Kali and then password or whatever you made yours, doesn't matter. And now we have our desktop environment. Now we can set this whole thing up. I, I always like to use MITM web. Okay, since I was just checking this installed. Uh, okay. And then I like to do mode wire gold. You can also do transparent. I find this to be a touch easier. And then we uh, can copy. Let's just check that this copy uh, worked. Let's use our... Let's just see if we've uh, successfully copied that. Okay, we have. And then we go to Windows, and we can just paste this in. We'll create our wire guild. And now, uh, the final thing we have to do on Windows is install a wire guild client. Well, actually, one more thing. we got to do our IP addresses. Uh, 
So we go to our Ethernet 1, which is the one we're going to use for wire code, and we give it an IP address. Now what we put in here does not matter, but the consistency of it does matter. That's number 29. Uh, I don't think I don't think it actually matters, uh, so I'm just going to say a 16. Okay, so I'm watching this in editing. I just wanted to clarify what I mean by consistency. So what ultimately matters is that if you choose an IP address such as 10.0.0.1 on Linux, your Windows needs to use 10.0.0. something. It can be two, it can be ten, but it should be on the same subnet. The subnet once again has to be consistent. Sixteen on the Windows is equivalent to 255.255.0.0 on Linux. Uh, just choose the same one and you are golden. Okay, so we actually have to add it manually, all right, in this version. So here we go. Uh, and we'll call this uh, proxy. And we'll give ourselves an IP of 10.0 to 0 to 1 uh, and 255, And we don't need a gateway. And now we are connected to proxy. And that means we can use this. So now we just need to download a WireGuild client, which on Windows is just downloading an installer. We run it. I might have to rename it to .com. Final step is to edit in the config file so that the IP address matches your Linux IP address, that's the thing that I spent a bunch of time trying to figure out, but that's how you do it. it shows 10.0.0.1, you're going to put that in the same spot I'm just editing here. It works. Okay. Uh, that's straightforward. So, oh, and it works. Beautiful. So I, I can edit that down and look like I know what I do I look, look like I know what I'm doing now the final step uh, which got that going is to go to mitm.it and that way you can install the certificate you go keep and we open it we do local machine uh, skip this skip the password and then when you're asked what store you want to put it in you want to put it in trusted root certification authorities we've done that and now we are absolutely ready to go. Now, the final thing I like is Sys Internals Suite. This is by Microsoft. And this gives you a couple of tools I'm just going to briefly show that I also find to be extremely uh, helpful for my uh, dynamic analysis. Just download the entire suite. Give it one second. There are a few Microsoft uh, things that don't don't like to download on this, so we just have to disconnect that for a second. And now it's working. I think it's because they use some sort of alternative uh, certification authority validation probably to prevent malicious things. So now there's a few tools here that are cool, but the main one you probably want is ProcMon. Process Monitor shows an incredible amount of detail, so you can truly know between this and the network requests what any application you run is doing. Uh, now I think I still have my Steeler demo here. So... Let's see what happens when we run this. Now we get to scroll down. And you can go to a process name and you can say, for example, that it is ratdemo.exe. And then you can see everything that this uh, malicious piece of software, in this case a stealer, did. And there's a couple of obvious uh, red flags. Let's go up a bit. So. If we go to the start, so the process is created, it loads, it copies itself. Oh no, that's that's prefetched, but it does copy itself. It opens some keys, which is in order to replicate itself. Uh, then it will link a DLL. 
Uh, it will open some more files. And this, this is one that uh, can be a red flag, as you can see it hitting a cryptography function. And uh, when we get to the right piece, we will also see it open and copy our cookies. And finally, we see that it uh, connects to the command and control server. And then it finishes. You can also see that over here. We scroll down. You can see the command and control server right here. And it hits uh, port 5001. And you can see exactly uh, the information that was sent over TCP. Uh, this is the decryption key for this Windows user, and this is the session cookies. And if you, and now you know, okay, uh, not legit. Now it might be a bit more obfuscated, but the end result is that you can see what's going on. So I hope this video uh, was helpful. Uh, please let me know in the comments if there's anything more you'd like to see. Uh, please do subscribe if you enjoyed it. It really helps a lot. That's all for now. Bye.